Yo, what is going on you guys? Bash from YJO here and today I'm coming at you with an FTK video. So I actually saw that Valence, Valence of all decks, a deck that I'm pretty sure I absolutely roasted to all hell when the deck was about to first come out and I said this deck makes absolutely no sense. It, it, it's can, First of all, it's overly confusing more than ddd way more than ddd right and it the deck just didn't seem to really do anything it was really really susceptible to pretty much each and every single hand trap out there so i said you know there's no way that this deck does this is gonna do well well this man proved me wrong so i'm not really sure exactly what this guy's name is but apparently he topped using a very very similar list i changed up a few cards here and there because we are going to need cross out designator and we're going to need called by the grave for this profile guarantee. So I just wanna make sure that we're able to add as many of the essential hand traps that we're gonna be having to negate, things like Ash Blossom, uh, Effect Veiler need to be in there as well, you know, things like that of that nature. But this is pretty much the list that he went ahead and used for the most part, again, to get uh, hitting at third place or regional. So really, really, I mean, hats off to you, my friends. I'm gonna go ahead and skim through it real quick. So we got uh, Magic Libra, never seen that card in my life. <laughs> we got Nibiru. We got a Gizmek Okami, uh, we got the Valence Duke, uh, Ninja the Valence, uh, Marquis, uh, Kaiden, Skullmeister, I mean sorry this is out of order by the way, Viscount, uh, Archer, Ash Blossom, uh, 2 Baron, 1 Cyberstein of course, and this is pretty much the entire FTK revolves around uh, Shinonomi, the Priest of the Valiance. And the FTK is actually really, really linear. Like, it is actually extremely, extremely easy to go ahead and pull off once you're able to just learn one or two key things. But it is very, very uh, easy to go ahead and just learn everything. It's not a very long combo as well. So I'm gonna definitely gonna show you guys the combo at the very end of this video, of course. I mean, as soon as I'm done with this profile in like 30 seconds. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But this one, this card, a telekinetic charging cell. Uh, I had trouble finding this one because I, I did not know this card. I didn't know a lot of these cards existed. So let's go ahead and put that out, okay? Uh, so we got one of each of the field spell. Uh, so pretty much this deck is centered around going first, but it does have some going second by abilities depending on which uh, depending on which route you're going to be going, depending on how the dice roll goes. But of course, you because it is an FTK, you do prefer to go first. It is a little bit wonky. Uh, so it's going to pretty much revolve around the Shino Gnome, and it's also going to revolve around Cyberstein, and then you're going to end up essentially with three Blaze Phoenix on your field to burn your opponent for at least 2,900 points of damage three different times putting your total damage output at 8100 no 2700 points of damage uh, three different times putting your total output at 8100 just enough to otk ftk your opponent before they even get a chance to do anything so it's really really good um so the the issue that not the issue the one thing with this uh, combo is that it's slightly reliant on you having another card in your hand that you can set um because so the thing is with shino nomi you can go the full combo, you can do the full combo with this card, but you only end up with eight cards on the field. And for you to FTK your opponent, you need nine cards on the field because Blaze Phoenix does 300 points of damage to your opponent for each card on the field. So if it's only eight, it's only gonna deal 2,400 points of damage each, which means your opponent is still going to have life points at the end of this combo, which means you are definitely getting slapped up right after you finish going off. So you need either another card that you can go ahead and set, or you're gonna have to activate the, uh, the effective marquee during the combo to go ahead and hopefully you search a valence card that you can go ahead and then set onto the field, or if it's a pendulum card, it will have you will have one free pendulum slot in the end of the combo. You can go ahead and activate to make sure that you're able to put output the uh, maximum amount of damage with nine cards on the field before activating Blaze Phoenix's effect. So I hope that makes sense. And now let's get right into the combo, guys. The wombo combo, the juice, the sauce. Let's do it. All right, guys. So we're here to start off the combo uh, for you guys. It's a quick replay for you. I did add a cross eye designator to my hand just because to, uh, we need to secure that ninth card. However, you will see later on this not that necessary because we do happen to hit something off of marquee. So we're gonna go ahead and play. <clears throat> so you, you activate Shino Nomi. I set a cross eye designator just so I can make sure that you know I don't get the the chain links and things like that uh, because we are on YGO Pro. So anyway, we activate Shinonome, activates effect to move it to the monster zone. Shinonome gets the effect to go ahead and search a Valence card. 
as we're gonna search solo activation which then searches a valence monster uh, essentially we're just trying to rack up resources essentially at this point just to make sure that we're able to get to the proper cards so we are able to activate baron directly from the deck baron's then gonna activate the special summon itself and then we activate baron's effect to be able to move another valence card to the adjacent pendulum zone it's really weird it's pretty much like you're playing uh, chess with this deck which i'm sure you guys have definitely already heard by now right so baron's gonna move shiro nome and then shiro nome has another effect when it's moved to an adjacent monster zone you get to search a valence monster so you go ahead search out the marquee then you go into beyond the pendulum and this is where we're gonna get our normal pendulum monster magic libra so uh, he did say, and it actually is pretty important that you uh, make sure you activate the Magicka Libra right over here. Uh, that is closest to the Beyond the Pendulum. So if for some reason, for me personally, I'm right-handed, so a lot of the plays I make naturally just feel more fluid going to my right. For example, my opponent takes up the left, uh, takes up that right slot for me. It feels a little awkward for me doing my plays, but that's just a mental thing with me. Anyway, so I am always going to uh, pretty much always link someone on the right-hand side. Uh, for anyone who wants to mess with me at locals, there you go. <laughs> so anyway, if you summon beyond the pendulum on the left hand side, make sure you uh, activate any magic libra on the left hand side as well and vice versa. Because we're going to be pendulum summoning and of course if we pendulum summon here and here, uh, then we're going to need to have space in order to be able to summon our marquee and it would essentially just clog up our zones, right? So it's really just for that purpose. So we're gonna go ahead and activate that, activate Marquee, and then Pendulum Summon, yeah. So Summon Baron, Summon Shinonome, then activate the Marquee to go ahead and Special Summon itself. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and activate the Marquee effect. I'm not sure if right here or, oh yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate the effect and we actually hit a six off the dice roll, which means I'm digging through six, top six cards of my decks, of my deck and adding the first or whatever, adding any valence card that excavated through it. So really, really good. Cause they add another marquee just because, just because I can, right? So there's really no uh, uh, direct way to go about it. It was just a good roll. So this is the one thing that you may be reliant on having an another card in hand that you can definitely set. So that way you can uh, burn your opponent for the exact amount of damage needed for game. Uh, so anyway, we're going to activate Magical Libra's effect, which actually lets you increase and decrease uh, one of your uh, two of your monsters levels by uh, you pick a number one through six. So I'm choosing two. So we're going to decrease the marquee by two and increase Baron by two, giving us two level four machine type monsters on the field. And we're going to use that to summon Gear Gigan X. And a Gear Gigan X is funny enough. It's actually gonna allow us to search out Cyberstein. So, <laughs> so it's it's really all coming together, guys. So, Cyberstein, uh, basically, there's a reason why this card is limited, right? So, basically, you pay five thousand life points, special summon one fusion monster from your extra deck in the sack position. Done, right? So, you special summon whatever you want, which is great because this allows us to go into Sea Monster Theseus, and we're eighteen hundred life points right now. So, you may say, "Oh, we're we're, we're in the red. How are we going to be able to activate Cyberstein again to summon at the Blaze Phoenix?" Well, you're about to see, my friend. So, we're going to actually go ahead and get rid of the Beyond the Pendulum and the Gear Gigant X to go into a I think it's called Reproducus. Uh, yeah, Reproducus, which actually changes the type or attribute. And that's going to come up in just a second. So we're going to go into Power Tool Dragon using the Shironome and the um, and the Sea Monster Theseus. And Power Tool Dragons are going to allow us to give us the key to this victory. So uh, we're going to be able to reveal the tele three copies of Telekinetic uh, Charging Cell. Add one of them to our hand. The other two, I believe, get shuffled back into the deck. So this can only equip to a Psychic type monster, which is the reason why... Uh, Reproducus is so important because we're actually going to activate Reproducus' effect to change Cyberstein into a Psychic type monster and Telekinetic Charging Cell says equip only to a Psychic type monster you do not have to pay life points to activate its effects when the equipped monster is destroyed yada 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 other nonsense right so essentially what it's trying to say is we can abuse Cyberstein's effect starting now to go ahead and add summon whatever fusion monster you want from extra deck for free literally for free because we don't have to pay life points for it right there's no cost you just have to activate the effect so activate cyberstein telekinetic charging cell no effect there we go there we go activate it three times and then you go ahead and start burning for damage right so in the event you have that other card in hand you are going to start dealing 2700 damage and even if you don't have the other card in hand and you do happen to roll well off of the marquee 
uh, then I do have that other marquee in hand in order to be able to go ahead and activate and I'll do it in just a second as well. So we dealt 2700 damage with the first one, 2700 damage with the second one, and I activated the marquee just to uh, emphasize that you can do this off the roll as well. And we're going to activate the third Blaze Phoenix here as well, and that's going to deal 3000 points of damage. Not necessary to, for me to activate that marquee, but it is what it is. I mean, you're, essentially you're dealing a lot of hefty damage. Now, what you can do in the event that you not OTK your opponent, I'm sure you can definitely, uh, I mean, you have multiple big monsters on the board, level eights uh, as well, probably X's into something to protect yourself, but it's, it's, I think the best course of action is just trying to guarantee yourself the FTK right off the bat. It's very, very hard to hard to stop because essentially anyone playing against it for the first time is not going to know what to hit. But there's so many bottleneck effects. It's very, very niche as far as knowing what to hit. The good thing is, is that any hand trap that damages this deck is not necessarily used as much, right? So people are staying away from playing cards like Effect Veiler, which would destroy this deck because not once per turn, things like that. Imperm is still a factor, but it's only a three of, what are the chances they have two Imperms in hand? You know, it, it kind of plays off that as well. But that's gonna be it for the FTK, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Are Valence a viable strategy? Let me know down below. Leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.